Today's special feature webinar will cover how to navigate and request models using the iMac portal and how to best utilize these models in the CBRIM Responder platform. The Interagency Modeling and Atmospheric Assessment Center, otherwise known as iMac, has developed this portal in our CBRIM Responder system that allows users to request exercise support for an incident involving hazardous material releases. These models are created by iMac and the iMac personnel will then push these directly to your CBRIM Responder events, so it eliminates the middleman there. Anyone in the emergency response community can request IMAX support. So you do not need an actual CBRIM responder account, but in order to request exercise support from our portal, you will need a CBRIM responder account. Just to bring this network all together, we do have sort of four pillars to the CBRIM responder network. It started with RAD Responder that was launched in 2013. And then from there, we wanted to create an all hazards network. So in 2018, the chem responder piece was launched. And then in 2019, the CBRIM responder umbrella network was launched. So this includes both the existing RAD and chem pieces. And we wanted to add also a bio piece as well. So bio responder, which will be coming soon in 2022 as well as the iMac portal, which was released just this past month. So we're starting to fully put the puzzle together there for the CBRIM Responder Network. Here you can see the timeline of these events as well. 2013 was when RAB Responder was launched. And then in 2016, RAB Responder was codified in the nuclear RAD incident annex. So this means that RAB Responder will never be turned off, even if Chambridge is not the contractor, you will always have this system. So if you're training on the system with your organization, you don't have to worry about it going away. And then in 2018, that chem responder piece, like I said, which led to the 2019 CBRM responder overarching network. And in 2021, the iMac piece was launched. So again, the iMac portal stands for the Interagency Modeling and Atmospheric Assessment Center. This provides a single point for the coordination and dissemination of federal dispersion modeling and hazard prediction products that represent the federal position during actual or potential incidents involving hazardous atmospheric releases. You will be able to view these models directly from the event map as pictured in the left as well as any reports and documentation that iMac uploads. So how do you access and use the iMac portal and its features? There are a few ways to navigate to the iMac portal. One of them being logging on to your CBRM Responder, uh, logging into CBRM Responder and locating the iMac tile, which is located on the dashboard. You can also click the iMac logo, which is on the left-hand side of the Seaburn homepage. And if you typically use the hazard-specific sites, so either RAD or Chem Responder, you will see that tile there as well. So a lot of places for you to be able to access the iMac portal, no matter what website you use. Taking a look at the tile itself, the emergency support number is listed all over the iMac portal, but it is on this tile as well. So currently you can only request exercise models through the iMac portal. If there is a real world incident or you need emergency support, you will need to call this number highlighted in red. The iMac model request form button will take you to the model request form, which again can only be used for exercise models. So if you were to click that, you would be directed to this page. And the third button is the iMac dashboard. So this will take you into sort of the home page of the iMac portal and will also give you some links there as well. So on that iMac dashboard, you will again see the emergency support number if you need real-world incident support. 
the iMac models tile has that link to the model request form. The about tile contains information about iMac and the products that they provide. And the model request history tile will show you a list of all models that you have requested or you have access to. So what to do in a real world incident? If you do need a model for a real world incident, you will be asked to call the IMAC emergency activation number listed here. And like I said, this phone number is posted all throughout the IMAC portal. It's on every page. So you will be able to always locate this number if you need real world incident support. If you are on the model request form and you do, you do have the option to click real world incident for the request type. However, if you do select that option, the, the form will be hidden and you will not be able to enter any information. It will give you the message to call that real world incident number. That being said, even though you can't request an emergency model, IMAC will still be able to push models to events for an emergency situ situation. So once you call the number and get in contact with them, they will be able to push this information to your event per your request. Now taking a look at the exercise models, which can be requested through the portal. If you do need model support for an exercise, you will fill out that model request form and just set the type to exercise. Any CBRIM responder user can request a model. It does not matter what your permissions are in your organization or on an event, you will always be able to request a model. And there is an example model request form that is provided by IMAC that gives you some guidance as you're filling out the form. So to access this model request form, you can navigate to the home page after logging in. And on the IMAC tile, click IMAC model request form. And this will bring you directly to the create model request page. So at the very top, you will see this message in blue that has an example model, model request for you to view. So you can download this by clicking the download icon. And it will open up this example exercise support request form. The first part of the form is going to be the general information section. The name field is going to be the name of your exercise request. So for example, Cobalt Magnet 2022. You can enter a description of the request. This is an optional field, so you do not need to fill it out, but if you wanna include any additional information for iMac, you can put that here. The date requested field is the actual date you create and submit this request. It does default to, to the current date when you open the form. And then we do have a drop down list of events that you can request the model to be pushed to. So the event does need to exist for you already for you to select it. So here I selected the event MRC 1030 by MRC org, and then it will give me the start date and end date if there is one of the event. The next section on the form is the support request details. This section does have a few sections in it. So the first part is the contact information. Here it will be about who the actual requester is, what organization, and then the point of contact phone number and email, and then any additional comments. So this is who IMAC would reach out to if they have any additional questions or information about your request form. The second section and third section is the requested level of IMAC support and then exercise information. So this is where you may wanna reference the example form IMAC provided if you're unsure of what to enter for a specific field. And Note that the red asterisk implies a required field. So you don't need to fill out everything if maybe you're unsure of something. And 
like I said, if IMAC does need more information, they will reach out to the contact um, number and email that you provided in the above section. And the final step here is when is the final product needed? So here you can enter both a date and a time and it will um, allow you to select any date and time and then you want to hit save to confirm and submit the request. Once you have created the request, you will automatically be directed to the model request details page. So this will show you all the information that you just had entered as far as general information. You can also open the support request details section to view all of those fields. You can also view the events you associated the model request with. And if you click the magnifying glass next to the event name, you will be automatically directed to that event. And once your model request does have models on it, you can view and download them here in this models section. So after you've requested the model and you've submitted the form, now IMAC will receive your request and they will review and either accept or reject the request. So you will receive an email. So here in this example, I can see that my exercise request has been accepted. Just because the request was accepted does not mean that it is complete. You will receive an email once the models have actually been published to the model request form. So accept just means that they are going to create a model for you. And then once you get the published email, that means a model has been published for your use. So on this form, we do provide a link that will bring you directly to the request details page. So either clicking the link and that email, or if you're already on the website, you can now navigate to this page. You'll see that there is now a model for use in the model section. If you're actively on the website while your, your model has been published, you will see a banner that appears at the top of the screen. It will say iMac model was updated and it has been published. This is the same if a model has been archived and I will touch a little bit on what archive means a little later in the presentation. So the beauty of this iMac portal is that if you associate it with an event, anytime the models are uploaded, they will automatically be pushed to that event. No extra work needed on your part. So here I associated this request form with the event MRC 1030. If I navigate to that event, I will see those models listed in the GIS files section. You can check or uncheck the models depending on what you want to appear on the map. So if you want to look at a specific area or specific time, you can check and uncheck those at your leisure. You can also expand the files to view specific parts of it. So here, if you click the plus button, you can keep, keep clicking that until you see the specific uh, sections and then you can uncheck or check those if you want to take a look at a specific area. So what is a model? It's not just the image on the map. It is a federal atmospheric dispersion modeling and hazard prediction product. So these models are for official use only. They should not, they should be safeguarded unless otherwise indicated. You can have multiple models per request. So under that model section, there may be more than one. And each model can contain multiple GIS files and or documents. So in the example I had shown, there was four GIS files in that one model. From the event map in the GIS file section, you will see the download button. So you can download that individual file from the map or you can navigate back to the model request details by clicking the view model button. 
So if I navigate back to the model request details page, I will see the download all models button in the top right corner. I can click that or I can click the download all button on the model section header. If you want to view specific details about a model, you can click the magnifying glass icon and you will be taken to view the model details. So here I'm now in the model called model 10 slash eight. And if you open up the GIS files in document section, you can see those individual files that make up the model. So in this example, there were the four GIS files and there was one document that was associated with the model. You can download the individual files by clicking the download icon. And you can also download the entire model that contains both the GIS files and documents in either a notification or an email. So if you do choose to download the files and either the email or the notification, it will download to a compressed zipped folder. It will have the naming convention, um, the name of the model request you entered, and then the actual model name. So in the actual folder, if I go into the compressed folder, I will see separate documents in GIS files folder. And if I go into each of those, you'll see the individual JS files and individual documents. So going back to those archived models, what exactly does this mean? If a model has been archived, you will no longer be able to display the model on your event map. Only iMac personnel can archive the models. So an example of why they would do this is if they're outdated. Uh, even if the model is still archived, you can still download them, the files from the model details page. You just won't be able to display them on the map. And going back to the map, you can see here the archived date and time. So I can see that it was archived by Megan Callen on October 11, 2021 at 1826 universal time. And the, the boxes will be grayed out as well, so you won't be able to check or uncheck those. You can also have a closed model request. And once it's marked closed, the model is considered complete, meaning that if you do need another product or another model, you will have to submit a new separate request. So this is something, again, only that iMac personnel can perform this action. You will receive a notification when a model that is associated with your event has been closed. You can still view the files on the map and download them as well, as long as they have not been archived.